Welcome to the ASTV Sports Show for another episode. My name is Drew Jensen. This episode is brought to you by Tovi Hockey, making some of the best hockey sticks in the game. So make sure you check out Tovi Hockey for some great crafted sticks if you are a player or if you're like me and just want something fun to play around with on the rink. Speaking of rinks, we're going to be talking to a guest who knows the rink quite well. We have a returning guest, Matt Gorman, who's going to be talking a little bit about the lockdown in general, what's happening in certain hockey leagues. I know we talked to Darnell Duff on previous episodes about the WHL, but Matt's going to kind of fill in what's happening with other leagues and what's happening with players specifically, since MCN Advising is the company that he sort of runs and advises players through. So we're going to get Matt Gorman on the show to kind of discuss that. Uh, I'm very, very excited. Thank you for joining me again. My name is Drew Jensen, and this episode is brought to you by Tovey Hockey. If you have something of interest that you'd like to talk to in the sports world, I know we are sitting in lockdown mode right now, but that doesn't mean that we're going to be here forever. If you've got a moment or an upcoming highlight that you would like to discuss or talk about, please get a hold of me at this email address right here. Drew at amateursports.tv. Last episode or previous episodes, um, we talked to previous guests about some people that they would like to get on the show. If you are a listener or a parent, somebody who is involved in sports, we want to talk to you about your experiences, uh, maybe in the lockdown or upcoming, because we know there are a lot of seasons going to start like ultimate frisbee uh, when we talk to matt mcdonald but today we're talking to matt gorman the specialist in hockey so i would like to introduce you to matt gorman again for round number two of mcn's lockdown mantra with matt gorman how's it going matt i'm doing great how you doing i'm i'm doing okay for the circumstances i mean uh, I was talking to a couple of my guests before. I'm in lockdown mode as everyone else is, quarantined up, kind of social distancing as best as I can. And uh, yeah, it's been really tough. Yeah, you know what? Here in Alberta, we're uh, we're feeling the same way as you guys out that way. Obviously, as a as a country and every other country out there, we're we're trying to uh, beat this beat this uh, the best way that uh, we can. And you know what? I think it's uh, it's long days, long days for some of the kids, and you know even for the parents that are having to uh, homeschool now, which is a whole new, a whole new thing to some of the parents, including no me. Kid- no kidding. I mean, uh, parents are off work too, so you have all this time where, yeah, you're you're constantly around everybody, so it can it can get exhausting, and finding things to do to keep busy as well is is always a challenge. Um, yeah, what are you doing to keep saying right now? Well, you know what I we I think it's uh, it's it's a pretty special time right now with having kids and, and getting that extra time with them, and they may not think the same way because I, I'm one of those guys I like to keep busy, and when I'm busy, kids are busy, and yeah, so I get yeah. a few chirps here and there, and and they're they're letting me know how they feel about the odd workouts and the odd uh, uh, push up competition and that type of idea, but. Uh, just, you know, there's lots of chores to be done. And uh, yeah, I, I putz around the house and, and putz around the yard a little bit. The dog gets lots of walks. I think she's lost a lot of weight already. So well, that's, that's uh, good to get, uh, lots of walks in with her. That's good to hear. I mean, yeah, you kind of got to take advantage of the time that you've got, right? So spending time with family, uh, spending time with the doge, with the dog, taking it for a walk. That's always a good thing. Um, <laughs> That's that's great. That's great to hear. Um, sp- speaking of players, you said it, it's difficult for for players to kind of deal with this right now. How are some of your players dealing with this adversity? Well, right now, you know, it's a really important part of our our roles as advisors and uh, and mentors is to connect with these players. Um, you know, because there there is uncertainty. The the, the kids are that are two thousand twos and and they're potentially going to play junior a next year um they are uh their nerves are 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 shot right now they're they're stressed out you know typically you could go to a couple camps and 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 show showcase yourself a little bit um it's looking almost like there there may not be those opportunities for these young players 
Um, with that comes a little bit of a stress, uh, um, you know, from, from that point and, and lots of thinking. They have lots of time on their hands to be thinking about stuff that's uh, in the future and where they're at at this time. So we, we basically want to make sure that uh, they understand that focusing on the things they can control is really important. Um, maintaining that fitness level, making sure that they put in the time to their stick handling, you know, maybe shooting a few pucks and, and their studies, you know, their, their studies is a, a component that can be uh, um, extra time placed on that right now, you know, all the downtime. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Using your time wisely. You, you mentioned sort of like a limbo for these 2002 players that are going to be potentially moving up uh, who potentially are going to be losing their stage to showcase what they have for talent. Um, what does this mean for these players? And I don't want to be completely negative. Like there are positives to this too, like you mentioned, uh, maintaining. We'll talk about those too, but I, I just kind of want to dive in to kind of show the audience uh, the effects of, of what's happening to to these leagues and players. So, so basically, you, you look at uh, a typical season. You, you finish up your year playing, let's just use the Alberta Midget Hockey League, for example. Um, you, you play a year of Midget AAA or Midget AA, and, and then you, after you're done your minor hockey career, you have a few opportunities to attend a few junior A camps. And, and you know, those junior A camps are for life experience. I, I know a lot of us run into some people in their 40s, and they speak of those times, and they may not have made... Um, a junior A program or ever played at that level, but they remember attending the camps, which in turn is, is a valuable experience that they had at that time. And, and right now as it's looking is, um, and I, I don't want to speak out of turn by any means, cause I don't know the future of everything, but um, you know, there, there could be limited spring camps, which means that the kids will have to make decisions um, at this time, you know, when it comes down to whether it's June or July, um, which camps to attend to, where they may have the best potential chance to to fill a roster spot in that program. Absolutely. Yeah, that delay uh, is going to be difficult for a lot of people to kind of handle, uh, especially the league. Um, when are they rolling out some of these spring camps and how are they mitigating the blow um, for future teams? You know what? I, I really don't know the answer to that. I, I, I chat with a, a few GMs and coaches over the uh, duration of this time mm -hmm. uh, to get their take, but nobody really has any uh, idea. We're, we're hoping that it could potentially just be pushed back a, a little bit, a few weeks, you know, until uh, um, everything goes back to normal. But uh, it's all speculation at this time. Um, there are camps at the end of March that were uh, scheduled in, in beginning of April and, and those camps, I, I don't foresee them happening. Um, you know, so they'll have to take some other, um, you know, ideas in order to maybe pick and choose some of the players that they'll take to main camp. Um, with that said, it does affect the, the junior eight hockey world financially, you know, because some of these camps are, are great for the young kids to come through and, and obviously they pay funds to to go in and, and, and compete for um a roster spot but it you know it pays for the ice and it maintains the uh um, the teams for the future in the junior a leagues um so i i know there's uh not only are the players gonna you know suffer a little bit from this but our our value junior a programs as well yeah, it's and it, the trickle down effect of it as well will definitely have major implications for the following years too. I would assume. Yeah, Cause, uh, absolutely. Because I was talking to to Darnell Duff about this too, and he was even saying like players who, not like not just junior players, but players who have already made it, who were playing their last games in the dub. That was their last kind of thing, you know, and now. Like, what do they have? It's, it's over. So I can't imagine the feelings that these young kids have. I, I, I haven't ever been part of anything such as this, um, you know, and I, I, I sure feel for the, the owners, the coaches, the, the fans, the, the players, 
just to be basically uh, uh, the the season being wiped out like it was, and 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 you know the the emotions that the the twenty year old players would have at this time, and some of them may not ever put the skates on again. You know, they may go to university and start their next journey in life, and that may have been the last. But I hope that uh, the times before that they they have those to reflect on and and and, and stay positive about that and 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 value the times that uh, they did have playing the game. And as players and, and athletes, we all know that uh, you, you have to cherish every moment. If you're on the ice, you, you really have to, um, you know, cherish those times. And and I think uh, that's how they're gonna have to look at it. Absolutely. You gotta look at the flip side of the coin and uh, every everything's kind of got a, a flip side and you gotta look at it, so. It's important to keep perspective, especially in times that are that are negative. Yeah, that's hard. That I, I can't imagine being, you know, seventeen years old or or younger, or you know, where you're even our minor hockey teams. You know, these kids they they live and breathe this hockey. You know, and and to just be told, hey, you're gonna come home and you're gonna sit in the house now. Mom and dad's gonna tell you what to do nonstop, and you're gonna yeah. be uh, doing chores yeah. and doing this, and no school, no buddies around. So. You know what? I just—it's it, it, something that we we have to make sure that we're speaking to our kids about and and helping them guide them through this, uh, um, you know, particular situation. Exactly, and we're going to talk a little bit about more of those guidelines and principles after our first break here. So thank you for joining us on the ASTV Sports Show. Um, we will be right back. <laughs> At Collins Hotel, we have you and your family's comfort in mind. Relax in one of our 16 suites featuring king or queen size beds and 36 inch TVs. Suites also include a mini fridge and other kitchen appliances to make your stay as comfortable as possible. During your stay in Pilot Mound, visit Wiser's Restaurant, our attached family friendly restaurant and bar. It is the perfect location to host group meals, dine with the family, or unwind after a hockey game. Come in and meet our friendly staff offering daily specials on food and drinks, wing night Wednesdays, buffet Fridays, and multiple TVs to watch the game. Wiser's is the place to be. Collins Hotel and Wiser's Restaurant and Bar, located across the street from Blackjack Stewart Arena off Highway 3 in Pilot Mound. Welcome to the ASTV Sports Show. Welcome back. My name is Drew Jensen. I'm your host. Um, thank you for joining us today. We've got Matt Gorman back on the show talking a little bit about some advising techniques for players and parents. Before the break, we talked about some of the negative aspects to the COVID-19 outbreak lockdown. Um, what's happening in some of the leagues to the junior teams and players and coaches and fans, uh, which is unfortunate. But as we mentioned before we went on break, there is a flip side to every coin and it's important to take in perspective. So taking in those perspectives, Matt is going to kind of discuss his techniques um, for advising. I think that would be great since you are an advisor. Um, maybe some of your positive mantras and what players and parents, I know this is a lot, I'm like throwing everything at you at once. Like, Holy <laughs> shit, man, yeah. calm down. Yeah. <laughs> but also, you're, you're, yeah. Yeah, you're just like, oh my God, my head. Here. Yeah. I've been in lockdown for a while, man. You got to slow <laughs> down. Oh man, I couldn't even speak the other day, but you're going to kind of speak about what parents can do too, to kind of keep calm, um, help their kids through this process as well. And, and there's a lot of hurdles to jump through, whether it's physical and mental. So I'll let you kind of discuss those. Well, I think I think right now, um, the parents' concerns are the academic side. Um, there's so many uh, speculations on how the, the school system is going to provide the necessary education to the kids. And, and you're finding parents having to... Um, navigate that for the kids and assist in 
in some teachings. And let's face it, the, the older kids, 10, 11, 12, um, there's some parents and myself included that wouldn't be able to go through the curriculum that uh, they're going through at this time. And that causes a lot of stress from, from a parent standpoint, I think. Um, and, and I guess ensuring from, from that and that uh, um, the parents are, are communicating with the teachers and, and ensuring that uh, their son or daughter is, is taken care of as far as uh, um, the open communication with questions that uh, the, the, the student may have and, and using NETM as a resource. I think is very valuable and, and, and important um, along with the kids and helping them understand they have a responsibility to, to make sure that they're understanding the, what they're having to learn at this time. Um, grade 12 students, this is a, a very important uh, um, time of their lives and, and to be faced with this um, adversity a little bit is, would, be, uh, would be tough on a parent and the kids. Yeah. Um, it's it's mentally exhausting i'm i'm assuming so yeah and and you know what i i think that uh the 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 kids nowadays they they're so focused on the the academic side that they will um work at the you know with their time management and and and, and focus on you know finishing up what they started and it's 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 definitely important especially when they they have goals and aspirations to go on into the Canadian universities or the American universities and, and get into the, the faculties that they, they choose to, to get into, you know, so having the parents, um, first off in, in, in you know, re relaxing, relaxing and understanding that it's going to be okay. It's just a, a process and, and things will come into play. It always works out. You yeah. Know? Yeah, exactly. So what are the, like what's kind of going on with, you mentioned grade 12 students and some of that stress, what's for applications to move into colleges and universities and other leagues, what kind of uh, stressors is, is currently going on? Cause my, my sisters live in Alberta too. So that academic level is very, very high. Um, so I know that stress is probably high for those athletes out there, especially How, like what are, what are, what can they do to sort of, uh, handle that. Well, you know like what? I, I think everybody's on the same, on the same level, Drew. You know, I, I believe that in, in Europe, they're in the same situation as we are here uh, along with our American uh, friends. And, mm -hmm. and I think everybody's, uh, um, you know, having to do the same thing. we work at their, their, their core subjects and, and ensure that they're getting the grades that they can. And as far as moving along into the universities, it's all going to just pick up the same way once this is all said and done. Um, but, it, you know, I, again, it comes back to the time management and the dedication that these kids are putting towards the, the school side. Um, I, I, I think that uh, um, everybody's on the same playing field as far as the uncertainty and as far as the education and where, uh, where they're taking their classes now. You know, being at home and, and being uh, hanging out with mom and dad and having to time time management that part is is, is right across the board. Yeah, no, for sure. It's big big leaps uh, and and changes for for the school years in terms of the seniors and, and even freshmen and, and kids all over all over the place. It's it's a huge change, having to switch to online classes and uh, have you seen any kind of online training? Yeah, you know what? I have a, a daughter that's in grade eight, and and she's receiving her uh, curriculum through uh, the webcam, and they do a group session in the morning, and basically it's about uh, a two hour day for them when it comes down to receiving their assignments. There is a spot where they can go on and and ask the teacher questions, and the co the, the teachers have been really accessible, which is really nice, and you know it it, it takes a load off of us parents, uh, but I I know that. Uh, there's all kinds of speculations as to the marking system, how that's going to look as far as uh, um, the grade 12 students and, you know, whether or not they take the grades from before Christmas and the everybody passes type of idea. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to play out, but I know there's all kinds of different uh, um, ideas that are thrown out there and it'll be interesting to see how they, the, the, uh, um, the school system takes those into account. Absolutely. Um, in terms of 
physical training. What are players doing to kind of keep fit? You know, I, it, yeah, I was actually, I'm just connecting with all the players at this time and, and seeing where they're at, because that is an important uh, aspect of, of seeing, you know, um, in shape and, and being ready to go to the camps. And um, there's some kids that are, they have the weights at home and they, they can bang off a, a full routine just like they would in the gym. And then there's other kids that don't have that accessibility in their home. So um, really looking at uh, just an active lifestyle during this time is important. And, and the, the, the weights and, you know, the, the body weight ideas, they all come hand in hand. And it's just a matter of them doing it and finding that energy within to uh, commit to doing that. And that's where we come in is really try to um, let them know that they, they have to maintain that if they want to move on to the next level. You can't just, you know, sit in the house and play video games as much as I love those too. I, I, I love playing the video games, but you have to get moving and, and you have to uh, um, be active because if you're not, then everybody else is going to continue to work hard at home and, and stay in shape because it could come down to, you know, the, the everything uh, going back to normal within a week, we, we have camps open up again. We don't, we don't know how that's going to look. So you have to be ready to perform through, you know, through whichever time periods come. You At know, any moment. Yeah, yeah, you, you really do. And, and, and some of the kids that I'm speaking to, they, they sleep in till 10, you know, 1030. And it's like, man, you got to get up. You got to keep the routine as much as you can in order to, to have that success. And, you know, you can't stay up till 2.30 in the morning. You no. know, just because you're at home right now doesn't mean that you can let the foot off the gas and say, hey, this is just the way it is because, you know, that's just not the way that you can have success in the game of hockey or in life. So maintaining that that schedule and, and, and focusing on, you know, your your academics and your your athletics, you, you still need to, to be on that and thinking about it. And, and if that means you start to do push-ups every day or you do, you know, um, uh, you do plyometric training, you know, grab a skipping rope, something to do that maintains that health and keeping you, you, you fit. Um, but those are, those are things that uh, it, it's easy to talk about and it's really tough to put into action sometimes, uh, especially for the young kids that are, are uh, sitting there and having uh computer time and phone time oh, for sure phone. the distractions you know? galore and i mean it's for everybody we're all just kind of we're in we're inside so and i mean you can walk outside too there's nothing wrong with taking a walk so yeah and do get going for a jog you know go running outside doing a little uh, a little jog and then you know setting up a little game in your mind every every light fixture you do a sprint in between the light fixtures and then you take two two light fixtures off, you know, something to yeah. maintain that healthy lifestyle. And, 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 and at the same time, you're, you're, you're training and you're getting the, the wind sprints and, and um, you'll be ready to go. You know, you'll be ready to go if, uh, if a team calls and says, Hey, we're opening up camp and, and, and then it will be basically, uh, it'll be go time and you'll feel pretty good about yourself maintaining that uh, fitness level. Awesome. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of your specific advices uh, after this and, and as well as some of your experiences uh, through the COVID-19 thing, uh, how, what the first couple of days were in terms of like phone calls from players. We'll talk about that too uh, when we get back from our commercial break. So thank you very much for joining us on the ASTV Sports Show. We'll be right thank back. You,
Are you looking for a career in the salon industry? Check out Aveda Institute Winnipeg in the exchange. What sets us apart is our student mentorship program, 95% placement rate after graduation, real-world salon experience, and network of 7,000 salons and spas. You will learn creative cut and coloring, latest trends and techniques, social media marketing, fashion shows, photo shoots, and more. Now accepting applications for 2018, so check us out and book your tour today. Aveda Institute Winnipeg, hair school the way it should be. All right. Thank you for joining us back at the ASTV Sports Show. My name is Drew Jensen. This broadcast is brought to you by Toby Hockey, as you already know, in that top this way. There we go. Up towards Matt. Uh, they make some great hockey sticks. Check them out. They're awesome. They're sponsoring our broadcast today. Thank you. And we have Matt Gorman on the show again. So thanks for coming back, Matt. Thanks for having me, Drew. No, I appreciate it. It's It's been wild. Um, episode one, we talked a lot about your techniques for advising um especially for difficult times and where are we right now we're in a difficult time so it's been interesting <laughs> that first kind of segue we didn't even see it coming so yeah no that's that's an understatement i think it, you know it is it, it was side blocked and you know it took everybody by uh by surprise for sure Absolutely. What were the first couple of days like for you? Like for as an advisor, like were you getting a ton of calls from players as soon as leagues were getting shut down? What the, what was that like? You know what? It it was uh as far as the kids and and you know having their season um basically taken right out from under them. Um that was one of the the concerns as far as uh from the player standpoint and and there was so many what ifs, you know, like as far as Okay, well now the season's over and, and now where does that lead us for you know going on for the future and you know we uh, I, I we we're getting some teams were in the playoffs and that's a huge showcase for some of these kids and the concerns and the worries from uh, not only the players but the parents um i was getting a flood of phone calls for sure and you know nobody knew how to react to that i i have no idea either and i i just kind of um tried to um calm them the best i could by letting them know that um it's everywhere is the same we we're all faced with this and and we're gonna be okay you know it's yeah. it's the the health is number one obviously and and this hockey side um although in canada this is uh this is life the, the hockey is life or there's no doubt about it and but at this time to put it on the back burner just for a short time and 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 maintaining that uh positive outlook that we will have hockey again and and making sure that the the kids understand that it's it's fine we're we're gonna go through we'll take uh um this serious and then we'll get back to business as as usual um you know but as far as the emotional side for the kids it was devastating it was devastating and there, there wasn't much that uh that anybody could see when uh when this hit i was i was taken back and and i had lots of plans i I had plans to watch my girls play hockey and, mm -hmm. you know, cheer them on. And in the soccer side of things, I have a daughter that enjoys soccer. And, you know, so it was just a, the rug was swept from everybody. And, and you know, I think just reacting as uh, um, in a what positive. What do you do, though? Like, what do you do? I mean, it's, it's a natural thing. Um, as a player, I, I mean, we're, we're, I was talking to past guests as well. It's, it's frustrating because you're on a roll or you're training for something or um, as Darnell Duff was saying in previous episodes, you're, uh, you're the Portage, you're not Portage Terriers team. So you're the Dauphin Kings team and you're in, you know, the playoffs and you're actually going to win the series and then it's off and it's, it's frustrating. Like it's. That's emotional. And, and you, you compete all year round, I think, you know, to, to get to that point. And I can only understand, I, I, I could, only imagine how these kids feel, you know, you're, you're competing and you've got through a, a round of the playoffs and, and next thing you know, it's, uh, it's canceled and, and you're thinking you're going all the way and it's canceled and yeah, you just, I don't know. It's, it's a really, uh, um, it, it'll go down in history this stuff, I think. Well, it sounds like you do, you do have some advice and you've been giving some advice that seems very, very helpful for players from what I understand and from what I heard and, previous segments before this uh the, before this one um uh, before the commercial you kind of talked about keeping a schedule 
which I think is massively important, uh, like routine, uh, developing a routine and, and sticking to it. What kind of map or routines do you do you think is sensible for, for athletes to maintain peak performance? Because we know in terms of like the players going to the higher levels, they're playing for hours at a time usually and for hours a week, right? So they're usually on the ice every day or they're doing some kind of dry land training, right? So how, like, I know you mentioned like just finding areas to keep fit and doing that, but what kind of time regiments should players kind of be looking at in order to kind of, I know everybody's different. Everybody's, everybody's got a different body, but. Well, I love that you, you bring that up, Drew. I, I think that's a huge um, component for sure. And, and, you know, I, I think I left out the, the mental side. There's, there's lots of opportunity now for these kids to sit back and, and reflect on, on their season, you know, reflect on the things that they were strong at and, and, and also think about the things that they need to work to, to, to focus on, to be better at. Mm -hmm. I think those are things, maybe there's visualization that comes into play a little bit. Now you, you take a, a three minutes in a day to sit back and just reflect on everything and maybe watch some of your video, you know, yep. watch and check out the video and then, and think about maybe what coaches said to you, you know, what, did, what did, uh, you know, coach Tom say about this situation and, 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 and really start to piece that together and, and, and try to, better yourself by watching that and taking what coach had uh, mentioned to you, you know, in that particular situation, or, or even look at some of the things that um, your coach may have spoken of, of other teammates, you know, watching the, the video, ask your coach, say, Hey, can I get a copy of the video of the season? You know, maybe it was a, a, a game that you had a, a, a really good game or a game that you just didn't have the energy that you, you compare both of those videotapes so that you can see where, you can piece together and and, and really reflect on the, what brought that success for your the game that you had that was positive. How did you prepare before that game in order to bring that success? You know, little things like that that you could really use to your advantage now um, as a tool to better yourself uh, all around as an athlete. Um, as far as the, the, the strength and conditioning side, um, these kids are... are are so well conditioned now and and i think just um maintaining that healthy lifestyle you you don't have to train for hours a day as long as you're in there and you maybe go for a jog take a 25 minute jog and put the headphones in and 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 cruise around in your area you know do a few sprints and you know i i i love the when you incorporate the hockey side into the dry land grab a ball or a tennis ball stick handle that ball around and 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 pretend that you're Sidney Crosby or Connor McDavid and, yeah. you know, do the things like that. Simulate them. Maybe maybe you've watched the, the way that those guys carry the puck or the, the way that they even carry themselves in in on TV, you know, or whichever. And, and start to simulate yourself and think about the, the habits that those guys have created and, and just have fun with it. You know, grab the, the, um, the puck and do some dangles and then shoot the puck and, you know, bring it back to the, the – the uh the the fun of the game you yeah. know and take it too serious you know exactly there's this is an area or, or a time to kind of make it fun and, and have fun with it absolutely i totally agree we're going to take one more commercial break when we get back we're going to kind of talk a little bit more about that fun aspect um some fun things you can do as an athlete to kind of keep sane in the lockdown and maybe i can use some of these tips too um yeah we'll be right back um after this short break. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining us to the ASTV Sports Show. My name is Drew Jensen. I am your host. That um, previous segment, we were talking about some positive things that you can do. Um, but what are some fun things that athletes can do to kind of keep sane and keep 
keep fun. It doesn't necessarily have to be a sport. Like you said, sometimes there's mental things to work on, but what are some fun things that athletes can do to wait away the time here as an advisor? <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough question. What do you but, advise? Yeah. <laughs> um, you don't want to something. Like, but, well, you know what? I'm seeing a lot of things on social media about the, uh, the toilet paper roll there and uh, guys are flipping it around and, <laughs> and working on your hand eye coordination and, and getting into the nets. There's some impressive hands out there. That's for sure. You know, and it's, uh, it, there, it, it's pretty funny to, to, to watch some of those videos and, uh, um, yeah, great, great ideas, you know, to incorporate a little fun when you're sitting at home and even uh, the juggling, the, the soccer players are juggling that toilet paper, which is fantastic. You know, to see some of the, the uh, even the pros are doing that stuff, and it's, it's pretty cool to see. But, uh, you know, there, I, I think that uh, um, we, we've been actually doing some blackjack in this house. I've had uh, blackjack, blackjack nights with my girls here. And nice. Off, yeah, yeah, you know what? And it, it, it nice. brings back the, uh, the blackjack days on the, the bus trips and all that good stuff. And my girls yeah. are only 13, 12, and 10. But uh, to learn some math, um we, we we do play with poker chips and basically what happens is they uh they get 250 dollars you know within poker chips and if they're minus any of those so if they're at the end of the game and they have 150 poker chips then you owe me 100 uh push-ups or sit-ups or something along that line That's to uh, just bring in some uh active lifestyle there and obviously if they're up then that means i it's go time for me which uh which isn't uh what I prefer, but uh, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not always dealer wins, right, Matt? No, it isn't, buddy. No, no. it isn't. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've learned that lesson already, especially when you're battling against four of them. So, you know, it's uh, the, the odds aren't always with me. But, uh, you know what, we, we've had some fun in that time and in, in getting, uh, you know, different ideas. You know, the playing a little Monopoly. And, and my, I know my girls could attest to uh, – the, the extra trainings that I, I believe in having and they're, they're saying, well, dad, we don't need to do this all the time. It's, you know what? I, I, I do believe it. I, I think that uh, going in a garage, it doesn't have to be weights or anything of the sort, but just some, some good old family uh, activity, whether it's soccer juggling or, or you know, you, you uh, uh, throw the ball around a little bit, you know, yep. hacky sack's always a good time, you know? Yeah. But, that's a good one too. I forgot, I, I forgot about that one too. Just having a good old hacky sack sesh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. It's not quite the, uh, the green grass and, uh, blue skies out this way in Edmonton, but, uh, you know what, uh, throw a hacky sack around a little bit and, and play the tunes. And it's, uh, it, it's a lot of fun that way just to change it up. You know, we, we do a little bit of floor ball as well. The oh, floor ball is a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. Yeah. They get that, uh, that, uh, so if there's kids at home that are, are bored and they don't want to wreck mom and dad's walls and you know they they want to go downstairs that's a really good purchase so you, you can get them you know pretty cheap those floor ball sticks and a uh, little wiffle ball and and work on your hands and and get some movements in there and you know pass it around if you have some siblings and you're you're the older sibling throw the younger sibling in net they have no choice you know so yeah it's uh... <laughs> Hey, that was always the rule. So it's not the true, true. Yeah. If you're, the, if you're the younger one, you're going in. So <laughs> yeah. you're kind of like no the, the pattern you're not <laughs> <laughs> well, That's oh, cool. Yeah. I'm seeing I'm seeing some uh like TikTok challenges for, for athletes too. I'm seeing them get involved in that. I'm seeing a lot of like UFC fighters doing that kind of stuff as well. A lot of like social media driven uh challenges. I'm getting this, uh, this challenge is being sent to me twice. Now I've gotten this push up challenge <laughs> where people are like filming how many push ups they can do uh, like of themselves, obviously. And then they'll tag 10 people and then they have to do that. And then one of my friends tagged me too. And he's like, Hey, this is the play. She's like, Hey, this is the plank challenge. And she was doing this plank challenge. And I'm like, okay, well, it's good that people are like, you know, <laughs> keeping you know they're challenging people i just kind of want to do i think it'd be hilarious to do like some kind of ridiculous workout routine and then tag 10 people and be like all right your turn <laughs> make them run like the gauntlet or something. i like your style buddy absolutely yeah. 
<laughs> well, it'll it'll come. Just you wait. It'll be on my Instagram or something. So yeah, well, there's no doubt about it. That's a great idea. Yeah. Maybe you should send it to the first ten. Oh yeah, exactly. Don't yeah. even don't even choose just the first ten people. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> randomize it. Yeah, exactly. I'll go on a site randomizer and do it. But yeah, there's definitely ways to keep to keep saying to keep having fun and doing things uh that floorboard idea is wicked if you're a player a hockey player out there or a parent who's kind of looking to purchase something i know a lot of stores are doing like like delivery so you don't have to go anywhere we're not advising that at all so if you need right. some of this equipment i know a lot of different places will ship uh, and a lot of the stuff seems to be same day so because they're so slow in store so yeah I'm and you can get the four bowl stick for i i believe they're 40 to 60 bucks 40 somewhere in there and you know if you if you go through the united cycle here in edmonton just say you're uh with mcn and they, they've been really good to the the people part of mcn and a little discount there for their floor ball sticks and a, a wiffle ball so you know a good uh go. good resource there to to go through well, i'll put this up here right at the bottom just like last time Whoa. as well so there's the there's Matt's email if you're interested in getting a hold of him for advising techniques or just if you have questions, uh, even if you're not a client of his, if you've got a, a question about what's going on, I'm sure he'd be happy to answer it. Um, you're a great guy. So and th and this is the website as well. So go to the website, check out what they've got going on for programs and stuff too. They there's a lot to do in this time. So fill it with something that's valuable, fill it with something that's going to make you rise above the adversity and not kind of sink below it or get absorbed in the negativity. Yeah. You got to keep calm and push on. Right. So yeah, exactly. But thank you so much for coming on the show, Matt. It was an absolute pleasure to have you on. Um, we'll get you on for episode three. Once this sort of simmers down well, I'd love to grab uh, an athlete or two that you have on your team as well and, and get them to talk uh, of their experiences as well. That'd be great. No, I, I really appreciate you having me on, Drew. It's awesome. uh, it, It's been great. Thanks. I seriously appreciate it. Uh, it it's, it's been awesome. So thank you so much for coming on. Um, we'll see you shortly. Sounds great. You have a great day. Stay safe. Thank you. You too. All right, everyone. Thank you. We're joining the ASTV Sports Show. My name is Drew Jensen. We had Matt Gorman on the show for round two of MCN's lockdown mantra, uh, keep calm and push on. So thanks for joining us on the stream today. The stream was, um, or the, the episode rather, not the stream, the episode, uh, is brought to you by Tovi Hockey. Uh, they're a great, great company that makes some great sticks locally. So check them out. Um, they're, they're awesome. Uh, if you want something that really elevates your game in terms of shot speed and power check them out they're pretty great um with the lockdown kind of going on we've been busy at astv i've planned a lot of different episodes uh last episode i'm not sure how these are going to kind of queue up but we talked to matt mcdonald with the ultimate frisbee lockdown and sort of what's going on there uh next up we're going to be talking to um derek uh pollock it's gonna be great we're going to get Derek Pollock on the show. And he is a 22-year race veteran for the Red River Speedway. So if you're interested in learning how to race, please check out our next episode next week because we're going to get Derek Pollock on the show um, to talk a little bit about what it takes to become a racer, what you need, breaking down those stereotypes, so on and so forth. So join us for the next episode of the ASTV Sports Show. My name is Drew Jensen. It was an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. If you have a question, please get at me at drew at amateursports.tv and follow me at Winnipeg underscore DJ on Instagram. It was awesome talking to you folks. Have yourself a great day and a great lockdown. Keep sane. And we are ASTV. We push the boundaries all the time. We push the paint. We live with outside of the red and blue lines. We we're ASTV. We'll always be here. So if you're an athlete or a sports parent or a sport fanatic, get at us with your story. We would love to feature you again. Thanks for joining us. My name is Drew Jensen, and we will see you on the next episode of ASTV sports show.